What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. You looked for it, and lo and behold, you found it. This is the podcast where we dive into the deep, dark, murky waters with a plethora of legendary guests. Speaking of legends, I am, of course, your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the number one scumbag Rex Ruger. That's R E Triple X. You might also know me as the King of Sleaze, aka the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, aka Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. That's right. You are looking at the one and only son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans. I'm your ice cream man, Mr. Wap Bop Loo Bop Wap Bam Bam Shazam. Hot damn. Oh, I'm feeling good. And more importantly, I am looking good. So is everybody in the house, including my beautiful audience. And for me, that is, of course, made possible by my favorite product. Speaking of favorites, coming to you from my favorite place, the Lavender Lounge of Love, and joined by one of my favorite people slash puppets, the great Keith Hernandez puppet, ladies and gentlemen. Bringing you, of course, the No Frills podcast. You don't get any frills, but you get something so much better, and that's thrills. And what are those thrills, Rex? Tell us, please. Well, I've informed my audience before that the thrill is getting the chance to look at. Sorry, a little something on my shirt here. How embarrassing. The thrill is getting to look at me. And we also cannot give you thrills because we don't know how. And that's that. We just don't know how. That being said, uh, I will say that if you really would like a thrill, hit me up because I am looking for virtuoso level players for my Glam Sleaze Metal Passion Project, Love Sword. I may even tap today's guest to uh, bash the skins for me because that is what he does. Bashism and bashism well. Uh, and as soon as we get him in here, he can tell you a little bit more about that. But in the meantime, let me tell you that as of this recording right here, this episode, we are up well over 260 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So thank you guys out there. And uh, please remember to go over and check us out on Facebook uh, for all updates on uh, uh, new episodes, upcoming episodes. Enough about that shit. Our guest is here. Let's chop it up, chop it up with him. I'm so tongue-tied when I get around these big rock stars. But I digress. Let's get him in here and chop it up with him on Pod Scum. I'm excited. Hey, hey. You hear that, Joe Cangelosi? I'm excited. What the fuck I'm, is going on over here? What's I'm happening? telling my audience how excited I am, man. And yeah, what the fuck is going you, you, you know, <laughs> Spoken like a true New Yorker. I lost your camera there. I don't see you. Yeah, there you are. Back, back, back. This is fucking wacky. All right. And I'm, sure, and, and I'm sure that you can tell, man, and, and it shouldn't sure. be too hard for you to tell. A guy that's been in, uh, in the rock and roll business uh, uh, as long as you have, I shouldn't have a very hard time proving my case that I'm Diamond David Lee Roth Jr., should I? <laughs> no, I, it looks, yeah. I see that. I see it. I see it, man. Yeah, I'm very upset, though, and I've been telling my audience that there's quite a glare off this poster, so I think I'm going to upgrade because i got to have the old man looking over my shoulder, you know? Where, I mean, you, where, are you, uh, where are you filming out of, man? Where are you? I'm in upstate New York. Oh, cool. All right. Nice. Yeah. I get the sense, and and like usually like we can sense our own, that I may be talking to a guy with a little bit of New York in him right now, too, no? Definitely. No doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. It's kind of like we can sniff each other out, right? We're just a bunch of crude fucking assholes. We are. We got the we got the seventh sense, man. You know. Yeah, we do, and I love the shirt, by the way, too. And we're gonna get to Carnivore AD, uh, you know, uh, uh, for my guest Joe Cangelosi. Where do I even start the fucking bands? I I, I just roll them out here. Uncivil War, Brooklyn Militia, Death Corps. Uh, you know, of course, our good buddy Speezy uh, hooked me up with you, man. Uh, you know, that's cool, Speezy. Uh, thank you, brother. Yeah. yeah, and one of my favorite albums, and 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 I want to say right off the top, man, that uh, uh, there is a thrash band uh, out of Australia right now called Harlot. Okay. 
who I absolutely love, absolutely love, really doing old school thrash the right way, uh, right. you know, way on the other side of the world, man. But, but I, I, you know, I've really fallen for this band and really love them, and I'm trying to fly the flag for them. But their lead singer, uh, Andrew Hudson, just had him on uh, as a guest the other day, and we talked about cause for conflict to no end. And he, really? considers, he considers it a perfect thrash album, and, and, and he got quite a kick when I told him that especially I was going to have you on. And he said right. to tell you, he said to tell you, and I quote, Tell him his drumming on that album is perfect thrash, savage, honest, and innovative. Thank you very much, man. Well, that's really cool to hear from yeah. you. Know, I uh, I never got too much feedback from anybody um, on that because I was out there in, in Germany and stuff, and it, it came and went, man. I was it, you know. Yeah. Kind of blue, and so, and that was a time in metal where you know it was pretty dead out. It was pretty dead, man. You know, grunge yeah. was taking over. Metal was really you know scraping bottom, and especially in the United States. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. And 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 I was so glad that he brought that up to me because I'm such a huge creator fan. But that album was way back in 1995, Speedy's first album. Uh, and, yeah, that's uh, right. and, and, and and if I'm not mistaken, the only one you did with Creator, correct? That's correct. We did. A, um, I mean, I'm on some other kind of compilations. We did some extra songs for, uh, but they're actually on the remaster now. Uh, Suicide yeah. Bombs and uh, Limits of Liberty. Those two songs. Yeah. They're actually the new Cause for Conflict record, but those were also those were on. Um, noise compilation record but that's all i've done with them yeah but yeah I so once to, andrew tells me this you know once andrew tells me this and 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 he shares his uh his uh his uh, uh his love for that album with me i have to go back now and explore it because it's it's so many years back and i had yeah. to and i had to go find out from uh you know what all the hype was about and lo and behold it is one of those weird creator albums where he did say that they were going through a time when it seemed like the sound was not quite what we remember from like terrible certainty and pleasure to kill and you know even extreme uh, extreme aggression I mean, they already took that left turn anyway right after uh coma soul so you know i mean i think if anything we um that record brought them back on the uh right track to yeah. you know the brutality man you know yeah, yeah. like i wanted to get me get back you know because that the stuff that i really enjoyed from them was you know extreme aggression and you know the, the raw stuff the faster raw stuff you know yeah. I, fast and you know i love fast thrash metal so what's not to like but yeah. i just like a lot of that renewal stuff too man and i as older that the older that shit gets the more i appreciate it really yeah but you know that's a it's a good great band man i, I actually saw them um you know last uh weekend yeah i saw you put the pictures up on yeah, your they, facebook yeah. yeah yeah it was cool it was and really I, I I gotta ask you, uh, we uh, what was your what was your upbringing like? As far as like you know, how how early on in life did you get uh, drumsticks in your hand and kind of know that that music was a, a path you wanted to explore? Did you want to do anything else ever? Like 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 uh, 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 as a kid, you weren't that guy that wanted to be a policeman or an astronaut or something. Well, no, my father's a drummer, so right oh, there, okay. I was already uh, you know pretty much like wow, that's something I really like. But I also, I like sports too. I was, you know, I'm still athletic, you know, you have to be to play this music, man. Yeah. But I was a, a big baseball guy for a while. That's why if you notice, if there's some of the uh, promo shots for um, when I first joined Whiplash in um, the end of 86, uh, uh, I'm, I'm still wearing a Gil Hodges baseball cap. Nice. I was like, you know, I was. Yeah. One foot in, one foot, get, get going inside the new yeah. realm of, you know, playing professional thrash metal, which was incredible at that age. And did you feel, uh, you know, uh, I, I, are you talking about like, like, like playing baseball as a profession? Well, I didn't, I loved baseball ever since I was a little kid, you know, yeah, and, me I too. Love, love me too. and I love drums too equally, man. So I, you know, I never really wanted it. I thought I would come to a place where I would have to, there was a fork in the road or, but as you know, um, the career of a baseball player is real short and quick, even if you get in there, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, you know. But basically, I love them both, and um, you know the desire to play m you know music was way stronger ap after a certain point. And then you know once I hit high school and I started my first bands and stuff, and I was still playing baseball, but I started to shy away. And then you know I heard the beginnings of you know Venom and Slayer and, and yeah, you know was stuff, it. and I was like, wow, this is I have to be a part of this. You know Exodus, Tom Hunting. I saw Tom Hunting, man. And I was like, fucking what the fuck. Yeah. This is it. This is, yeah. this is uh, yes. <laughs> so, and, and do you have a particular team that you root for? I'm a Yankee fan. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I guess we'll end the interview right there then. No. <laughs> All right. I'm a Mets guy. I'm a That's Mets okay. guy. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. And I tell Mets fans this too. 
I'm not a hater, man. It doesn't. I don't give a shit. Yeah. If, the, if the Mets are in there, man. Yeah. I'm rooting for the Mets, bro. Pro New York. Yeah. Yo, they, you know they won. They won their championship my birth year. So how could I? How could I hate them? Who the Mets? Yes. yes. Eighty six. Sixty nine. I was just kidding. I was trying to make you feel good, telling you Thanks, you, you should have you should have just went with it. I don't fucking look that young, man. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, well, and it wasn't going to be me that was going to end any end the interview. It was going to be the Keith Hernandez puppet back here who, who, who did not who did not like that answer uh, 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 as soon as you said Yankees. Shit, but, uh, man, damn. Um, hey, what are you going to do? Yeah, City Field and, uh, is beautiful, by the way, man. City Field is gorgeous, man. It's really yeah, nice. it is. I've been down there. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, 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 it is wow. really nice. Um, uh, so out of all these bands and, you know, I, I, I just ripped off, uh, a, a, a bunch of them. Uh, is there one band that you identify as kind of like, you know, that's my band or, or, or are you one of those guys that likes to be involved in a lot of different projects and you kind of identify yourself and on all of it? Is there I one band that you really hold near and dear and say, that's my band? Well, you know, it's hard to say that my first real professional band was Whiplash. So. I would have to say, unfortunately, I can't feel that way at this point in time because of, of you know bad stuff that went out in the past, which I'm trying to just like let it let it ride, man, you know, because you know years go by, man, you know you have to like, but um, yeah, Whiplash was my first experience in breaking into the world of metal, man, professionally, and I did my first record at 17, I was Ticket to Mayhem and stuff, and so yeah. I was really young, man, and uh, I learned a lot of life lessons just being in a band professionally and playing and writing music with them at that time too as a kid and you know yeah performing i wasn't even able to be inside the clubs and i was playing these clubs it was crazy man i didn't re i didn't realize you could be allowed in whiplash if your name wasn't tony well <laughs> here we go now now comes my famous story bro okay everybody has to hear this one all right all fucking whiplash story all right so anyway me and scaglione right you know we've always been like this now we're really tight man we, we stayed in touch I love the guy, fantastic drummer. I mean, I had to fucking learn his shit. I was a little kid, man. It was it was pretty overwhelming to like, yeah. you know, Tony Scaglione is a great drummer, man. It's Amazing. Great, incredible shit, man. And uh, you know, you, you can't deny it. You know, that's the way it is. And I had to follow that as, as a guy who just breaking into it. So, you know, I had to do my homework, man. And you know, we're really tight, great guy and everything. So yeah, my name is not Anthony, man, or Tony, right? But yes, it is, because my middle name is Tony. So my name is Joseph Anthony Cangelosi, right? Mm -hmm. Get ready. Here comes the mind fuck here. Okay. Woo, 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 woo. Okay. We got Tony Scaglione, right? Tony Scaglione's name is Anthony Joseph Scaglione, right? So, wow. Now you're thinking, wow, we have our first and second names are the same, right? Yeah, but yeah. guess what? It gets even better. <laughs> because our last names are exactly the fucking same. If you switch the letters around in Scaglione, you spell out Cangelosi to the letter, man. Wow. I know. I can't even, to this day, every time I tell that story, I still, it gives me the chill. I can't even fucking believe that. It's just yeah, the one of them. What kind of shit is that, man? I know. I what know. Kind of that's black magic is that, bro? Otherworldly. Crazy. That's it's insane. Fucking, it's yeah. Fucking nuts, man. So, and yeah. But I never realized, you know, I didn't sit around doing that. Somebody actually, um, Somebody on MySpace one time just like texted me out of the blue. He goes, "Hey, bro, did you know that you and uh, Scaglione are like the same guy, man?" I was like, "Get out of here!" He goes, "Try it, man. Try it." <laughs> Fucking Lo and behold, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, you know, I, I, you were just talking about guys like Tom Hunting and oh, uh, you, you know, I, obviously it. Sca and obviously Scaglione. Uh, are there guys out there? And and you know, you've been doing this for so long. I don't want to say. Uh, you know, I don't want to word it like everybody else does, yeah. influences and all this stuff. But who are some guys whose drumming you just enjoy listening to as a fan? Then, now, what? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, always. Just guys that you love their playing. Tom Hunting is definitely a love in terms of thrash, man. I don't think it gets much better than that. He swings. Okay. He that feels incredible. He's powerful. He has incredible, like, um, just a flow and, a, and, and just a way to play that I really I, I respect it so much. And it, it really made me want to play thrash metal, man. He's my guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, David Barter, of course. Everybody loves David Barter. Who doesn't yeah. love David Barter? I know, I know. I had I had a great uh, uh, experience touring with him for about two a month and a half, two months, I think. Uh, we played a, a tour together when he was in Grip Incorporated. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. So we got to see each other play every single night, which was fucking amazing, man. 
Um, there's so many good drummers out there, man. I like anybody that I can learn from too, man. You know, like you can always learn something from somebody. Um, all the stock, stock great drummers out there, man, from all the thrash bands, man. I, I don't think there's any bad drummers, man. You know, you have to have a certain level to play this music, you know. Yeah. John Bonham, of course, is one of my favorite all-time drummers. John Bonham, you know. Bill Ward, of course. I love Bill Ward. The legend. It's yeah, uh, there's so many great ones. Man. I gotta ask you though. I was talking to somebody, uh, uh, you know, and uh, I forget who, but I have so many guests on here. But I was recently talking to another drummer, and we were kind of discussing like why a guy like Lars gets bashed, uh, uh, you know, so uh, much. It seems like I'm he really gets beat up a lot. Uh, it's a bunch of bullshit, bro. I'm so fucking sick of that fucking narrative, man. They gotta stop already, man. Stop the bullshit already. The guy can play the drums, man. Let's face it. He may, you know, if you want to start picking people apart, man, I mean, think about, like, there's no perfect drummer, man. Right. Everything, unless you're a fucking Pro Tools guy who gets, you know, all your shit gets thrown into a grid and whatever, you know, and everything's like, Shh. but like, you know, people breathe when they play. People do different stuff. They slow down. They speed up. Whatever the case may be. Lars, you know, Lars put down some of the most memorable, incredible drum parts of all time, man, and some of the greatest fucking metal ever made, man. Yeah. The way I see it, how dare you, man? What is wrong with Fucking unbelievable. I know. It is. It, it, yeah, it really is. And, it's and, almost like, you know, it's almost so dividing, man. And it's such a stupid uh, subject to talk about. Like, there's and it's not even one of those things, like, you don't necessarily, you, you, uh, you know, and, and you can probably elaborate on this being is that, you know, I'm not a musician. But, you yeah. know, certainly, though, you know, certainly you could be a great drummer uh, and, and, and do a lot on, I, I, I get the sense when I watch Lars that a lot of it is playing off of a lot of feeling. And, and I think yeah. even he would admit, not the most technically yeah. proficient drummer. Doesn't matter. Right. Technically proficient is, you know, that that's another thing these days, man. You know, I'm coming from the old school playing, yo. I respect some of these kids that fucking have an incredible technique, which is like mind blowing, but musically, there's no heart, there's no soul. A lot of the stuff is lost in, in, in all that trying to be technical shit. Some of the best stuff you ever heard in your life, I'm sure. Riffs, drum parts, whatever it may be, it's simple, man. And you yeah. remember and you remember yeah. these things, you know. I mean, I think his style is great, man. When I first heard, I was fucking floored. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. Come and on, fight fire with fire. I was. I know. Like, Iconic. Yeah. Iconic shit. Iconic shit. And it'll stand the test of time too. So I mean, you know, to this very day, man. To this very day. That's why that whole narrative and that whole argument is bullshit crap. After a while, it's just like, come on, stop. Uh, a couple of years ago, when everything got really crazy with COVID, uh, you know, how did that affect you and what you were doing musically at that time? Did it derail any plans that you had or any projects you had? Well, I was doing this thing on Civil War with uh, Scott Owen, the original High Racks guitar player, and my yep. friend today who was in Whiplash with me. He, I've been playing with the guy since I'm 11 and all sorts of deathcore, all sorts of situations. But anyway, we just put a, a, that band together. It was a remote thing project, and we were going to finally try to do something. So we just finished that EP that we did. It's on Spotify. It's just a self-titled on okay. Civil War. It came out pretty damn good for the f first time that we ever like attempted individually to, you know, record something by ourselves. We never did, you know, I never did that in my life. Yeah. I, I usually always played with the band in the studio live. You know, that's usually the best way. Anyway, we finished that. Um, yeah, we, was, uh, we were locked in, man. Uh, I didn't do anything. It did affect me, uh, but I wasn't actually... A, actively playing shows at that time so i was just playing as usual you know every single day even more than ever because i was yeah. just in the house but i did get together with my friend uh Tarul uh kaya his name is from uh turkey um incredible musician he, we became friends on facebook and so we started to um we put a, a whole bunch of uh i think it was the 25th anniversary of calls for conflict conflict and we played all those songs and uh he would send me the tracks. I'd just play them and play to them. So I actually play, you know, started playing all that cause for conflict shit again 26 years later, man, which was pretty – I was half the age that when I recorded it. And then COVID came and we started. He, and it came out pretty good. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to check out some of that stuff. The, the quality is not that great, but, right. you know, reliving the parts and playing those parts, it was a lot of fun, man. So I, I, kept, I kept busy. And going back to that creator period, uh, you, you know, even though your stint with them, uh, even though your stint with them was brief, uh, 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 how do you get how do you get pulled into that band? You audition? Do they know you? Pri they 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 know you prior to? I mean, oh I, man, yeah, yeah, it's it's a crazy fucking thing because um, it all ties into each other, which is really wild, man. Um, initially, 
Roadrunner and Carnivore were on uh, Road Racer Records. Roadrunner here, you know, they were. I think that they were the first metal band signed. One of the first metal band signed. Anyway, when I joined the band, I was on Roadrunner. So Retaliation came out, and um, they got banned. Carnivore got banned. They couldn't go on this German tour with Sodom in '88. Uh, so the next band up was up to us, Whiplash, and they asked us to do it. So we did the tour with Sodom in 1988 out there in Europe. It was our first time out there. It was mind blowing. Yeah. Mind. Uh, I met Frank, Tom, and Chris. Great guys, man. Sodom still to this very day. Love them. They still kicking ass. Yeah. Um. So I I became really good friends with Frank, and then um years later I was in um I, I visited Germany. I had a girlfriend there. I visited Germany. And uh, I get a call, my last day on the job, I, I got a job, I was cooking Mexican food. I mean, I can elaborate, it just goes on and on. Yeah. Anyway, I was there for like a year. I was getting out of there, going back home. And um, I get a call at the job. I never get a call at the job, man. I was ready, I was like, gave my two weeks notice. I was out of there, man. Yeah. He's like, phone, it was Frank. Frank Blackfly, Frank Gaza. Yeah. He's like, yo, bro, I heard you're in Germany, man. We need a drummer, Venter's gone. Do you want to join the band or you'll try out? You know, I said, fucking hell yeah, why not, man? I mean, that's what I really want to do. So yeah. I tried out and got the gig, and that's how it happened, man. So to continue with the weird legacy of this all, all that happened, you know, I, I creator was passed. I left. I, I actually quit the band at the time. I quit. Don't, don't, don't hear anything else, man. Don't believe anything else. Okay. <laughs> so no. So I, uh, all that stuff happened, and then years later, you know, I'm in Carnivore ID, which was a lot of fun, man. It would be great. But that all... Thing, just it's almost like a 360 because if I if Carnivore never got you know banned, I would have never went to Europe. I would have never met Frank. I would have never been a creator, and I would have never been in Carnivore ID right now because yeah, meant to be. Beezy told Baron from Carnivore ID, "Why don't you get Joe to play drums for you?" Yeah. I didn't even know this band that existed. So, and that's how that whole entire like dance was. Man, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> And for people that might not know, uh, 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 Carnivore getting banned, for people that aren't familiar with that, what exactly yes. were they banned for? They were banned for their lyrics for Jesus Hitler, the song Jesus Hitler. Okay. Most, most likely it was that song. Yeah. yeah. And it seems so uh, funny nowadays with all the shit that you can get away with, uh, you know, now. that's It just seems I, crazy. Oh. It's like nobody would ban an eyelash at that now. I know. It's unfortunate, <laughs> man, but it was lucky for us, man. I mean, you know, who knows, who knows what was going to happen at that point. But, I mean... He was always pushing the envelope anyway, man. Yeah. No matter yeah. what he was doing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess he got his point across there and freaked people out, man, as usual. And so now that you're doing the Carnivore AD thing, uh, 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 how do you get tapped for this? So, um, Speezy from Creator um, called Baron, who, you know, is the guy that's, you know, the main guy in there. Baron, um... He he called he told told me about it. I got in touch with Baron. Baron had a you know we got together. We had a, a tryout, whatever. We played a couple times, and that was it. And I, and, I and is it a logistic thing as to why they went from Carnivore to Carnivore AD? No, well, the, what really happened was Carnivore AD was actually um, started by Louis, the original okay. drummer. Yep, Mark, Mark from the from Retaliation. And Baron, because you, you know, you know, Pete was, he was gone already. So they reformed Carnivore in a, in, a, in a limited fashion, I guess, at that time, which was Carnivore ID. Right. But as time went by, I guess um, they had other member. I had another drummer. I guess they just uh, passed the torch, like they kind of passed the torch to Baron to keep doing it. You know, they didn't. They think it was a cool thing, you know, to keep the music alive. Yeah. So, um, you know. They had another drummer, Joe Brent Suborte, I think his name was. Yeah. Yep. Really, yep. Kill, a dr kill a drummer. And then um, out of the blue, I get a call, you know, to get, join the band. I, so and I've been in the band almost two years now. And what is the plan with this? Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 do you anticipate that we will see new Carnivore music or is it going out or is it about going out and celebrating what's already there? Absolutely. Celebrating what's already there. I can't see us possibly trying to even go near you know, using the name and coming out with any kind of material to represent it because it was all Pete anyway. So yeah. maybe if anything, some live live stuff with the same songs, but <laughs> who knows, man? You know, I'm just happy to play the songs. 
I never really intended on playing in other people's music. You know, right. I was never a cover guy or anything like that growing up. I was always a part of, you know, original musics, but I love Carnivore. So to me, this is like, it's an honor and it's a lot of fun, man. And so what else do you currently have going on right now? Because I did roll out a lot of bands. Uh, I guess I can go through them one by one. So uh, uh, Uncivil War, the yeah. status so with that? Uncivil War, the status with that is that we have some um, recordings in already done. Um, it's just on hold right now, basically. There's some stuff going on on different ends that people can't do. So we just kind of, we did our, we got the, that um, EP out, which was really cool. Uh, Patrick Lynn from uh, Morbid Sane is singing on, on okay. that. Really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, and I don't know, whatever happens, happens. But I got my some of my drum tracks in the bag. It's pretty much, we have uh, a song that we finished right before the uh, pandemic, which is really fabulous, man. Hopefully... It sees the light of day and something happens with that. But And what about Brooklyn Militia? Brooklyn Militia, uh, that's a crazy band because, of course, Rich Day's in that band from, from you know, all the bands I was ever in. Yep. Glenn Hansen is the, uh, also in the band from uh, Insult to Injury from Whiplash. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're fr we've been friends since we were kids, so that can be reactivated and activated at any time. We, we haven't done anything in a while, but I'm sure, you know, it's a local thing so we can get it together and do it whenever you really want to but you know everybody's kind of doing their own thing right now and then what about deathcore now that's something you've been doing for a long time right oh well deathcore was my very first band yeah it, that was it that was my very very first band and uh everybody's still alive and well thank god we got together um a couple of years ago we reunited just to you know see each other man yeah. as friends as brothers and yeah and try to play some of those old songs and it was it was really cool man so we all, we try to come up with a plan to uh, release the original demo and finish the songs that we already had written that we never recorded from back in '85. Yeah. So that's still the plan. So it it will definitely happen, man. Definitely as a drummer, uh, you know, as a drummer, uh, do you like the uh, you know do you like the creative process in terms of other than just laying down drum tracks? Do you like oh, getting yeah. in there and writing lyrics? Oh, absolutely, I've wrote lyrics on everything probably ever ever did except for maybe the creator stuff. Yeah. I love to be involved in the arranging, the actual riffs, you know, uh, the music, uh, everything, man. And what if is I your think... creative? And what is your creative process like in terms of like? Are you one of these guys that gets like creative sparks of it like throughout the day, and you're jotting stuff down, or or do you treat it like a lot of guys? I have a lot of respect for guys that have that discipline that could just say you treat it like a job and say you know from one to five I'm going to go sit in this room and write. Right. No, I guess things just um especially it's better. I'm more effective in a live situation when the band is there, everybody's writing together. Yeah. The ideas are just flowing, man. Everybody's on the same page. I mean, I, of course I could sit there and write a song lyrically, you know, no problem. If I put my mind to whatever I want to do, I yeah. could do it, but I would rather do it with other people, bounce stuff off. I think that's the best way to do it because the stuff is even better because little adjustments on the spot, you know, you can make them right there. Yeah. 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 They're not so concrete. And then you're not, not sold on them either. Like you can get somebody can say, yeah, but if you did this first, then you're like, oh shit, you know what? Yeah. You're right. So yeah, I think it's better, you know, that kind of process, like the live process together. As and then since you know, and, and then since drumming is such a physical, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you know, and it's not to impugn any of the other guys' jobs in the band or what they're putting, in, you know, uh, into yeah. the performance on stage. Everyone's got a tough job up there, but drumming certainly extremely physical as no you got older and, and of course you got the sports background but you know have you noticed uh you know the dynamic of drumming changing uh, you know as you've gotten older like where you've had to had to make any kind of physical uh uh, uh adjustments or or uh you, you know uh has anything changed i can honestly tell you at this point in time thank god that i feel like stronger than i was like 30 years ago man yeah i'm playing faster harder more precise uh, more under control, but I know what I'm doing now because I've I've always managed to keep myself in you know pretty good condition. Yeah, you know I, I've never abused myself at doing that too much of anything. Yeah, yeah but you know, <laughs> never too much of one thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, just a lot of li little <laughs> lots of things. You know, no, uh, I just I'm very fortunate that I still got. I mean, I have tons of energy. I'm a hyper hyperactive son of a bitch, man. I don't do. I don't need any drums, uh, drugs, man. Yeah. I do a cup of coffee. I'm fucking running the races. Yeah. Man. yeah. I'm but yeah, thank God that. I'm still physically feeling great, man. I'm, and, and I'm so far, I don't feel limited at all. And are and you I, some, I, I, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. 
I just feel stronger. The more I play, the stronger I feel, man, which is like I used to when I was a kid. So yeah. let's hope that stays for a while, man. You know? and, and are you somebody, uh, as you've gotten older, you know, uh, uh, who still likes going out and playing live? Like, do you still like that? You know, because yes. I, I, obviously the narrative in people's lives changes when they get older. Maybe they don't want to be away from home as much. Maybe they got families, kids, yeah. maybe even a day job that keeps them, uh, you know, kind of yes. stuck. I and, have it all. I have all that stuff. I have it all. But – that's all I ever wanted to do is be on stage playing, man. That's where I live, man. You know, yeah. like, and I, ne I don't think I've ever done enough of it, man. So as I'm, I'm just like, it's like a drug, man. I need it. I need it in my life. But I mean, I need to play, period. It doesn't matter whether it's for like two people or 2,000 people, man. It doesn't really matter. Okay. You know, I have to do it for myself first, first and foremost, man. You know, and I'm glad you brought the difference. I'm glad you brought up the difference in crowd sizes. Is it difficult as a musician if you're playing like a small, like let's say you're playing like a small club gig and you go out there and uh, it is a small crowd. Is it hard to get yourself uh, uh, like amped up or like, uh, or, you know, like what's the mindset there? I think it's better. I think it gets me even more amped up than anything because they're right on your fucking tail. Yeah. There's not, you're not lost. They're not lost in this crowd of like ah, all this noise and shit. Yeah. It's so personal that you're, even as if it, if it's like 50 or 100 people, they're there right fucking there, man. So yeah. I think, in fact, the smaller clubs are the, it's just wild, bro. I mean, I've played huge places too, man. It's all great. It doesn't matter. To me, just the, you know, the fact that people are there watching you into it, man, that's, 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 it's all about, man. And, you know, having fun doing it. And, 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 uh, you know, and I've talked about this on, on, on plenty of episodes, uh, maybe to the point where my audience is sick of hearing me say it, but you know, the music business having changed so much right now and, and people are consuming music certainly much differently, you know, uh, you know, because of streaming platforms and, yeah. you, you know, the physical product not being so prevalent anymore, where we're holding a physical product in our hand. Uh, um, is there a right way or a, or, or a wrong way in, in your mind? Uh, of of a release format like you know people are putting out singles people are putting out eps oh, I, I old, old school bands are putting out lps is there a right answer in your mind i i'll tell you the truth i'm i'm really i have no idea i have no idea anymore all i know is what i used to love i used to love having the record opening yeah. up the cover feeling the physical looking at it taking out the liner notes reading the lyrics man yeah. even Studying. a cassette opening up those pages of the cassette yeah. whatever oh. man it's like you know living it man feeling it being in there Streaming to me is kind of cheap and it's kind of like, I mean, that's what's going on and that's what the story. But for me, I like the older formats, man. To tell you the truth. Yeah, I do too. It's like a shame. I got, I got thousands of CDs here, man, but I love it. It's great. And I think some of it too is obviously attributed to, uh, you know, obviously, the, the, you know, there's such an influx of stuff in people's lives nowadays that they, you know, it seems like you've only got their attention for a short time and then their mind is on something else. Like a fly. People yeah, <laughs> like a fly. <laughs> true man you know back in the day unfortunately it's really cool to being this age that you know because we i'm pre before the fucking internet and all this distraction stuff which it could be great and could be you know it right. has the contrast but i could choose to pick and choose what i want to deal with in technology now because i didn't have it so i'm not born in with the innate ability like that, that i need this in my life completely right. you know I'm born with it in my hand. No, I wasn't. We did other things, man. We we stayed in studios. We played for hours, man. We 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 didn't learn stuff on YouTube. There was no YouTube, man. We had to learn that shit by watching, going a lot to you know shows, watching people play, yeah, uh, exchanging information with musicians, you know, doing all the footwork, man. You know, yeah. sending demos out, putting demos on consignment in stores. And to me, that's you know that was the old ways were great. They were so innocent, man. Before all the corporate, you know. All the corporate stuff hits, man. You know, and, and you all think the it's, it, uh, so if a band was starting like you know at ground zero, like right now, oh my uh, god, uh, you know, and, 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 and you know, young, uh, you know, young musician comes up to you and wants to know how do you catapult your band for you know how do how do you propel the band forward? What's the right answer nowadays? Is there one? I don't think so, man. I think it's harder than ever to have an original band these days, especially. In this kind of genre because man it's been it's, it's an old we're old now man we're getting old man you yeah. know it's been decades yeah. but all i would say is that don't let anybody tell you what to do or how to do it whatever they just if you want to do you have to go for it if you want something you have to try to get it man you know but the best thing to do is just do do what you do man and get get play your 
go every show you possibly can and you know get your name out there somehow are whatever you somebody, it may be are you, know? you somebody that goes out and sees a lot of live music as a fan I, yeah well i try to see as much as i can you know whenever i can yeah like but i i should be get, seeing more stuff you know the whole covid thing just shut down everything yeah years, you know and you know it's got to support it too you know it's, it's a good thing are there young bands out there? Uh, 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 you know, is there? A, are there any acts out there? Uh, you, you know, who have really caught your eye or your ear? I should say. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know who 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 you feel like, you know, could possibly be those bands that you know keep carrying extreme metal forward. I don't know, man. I'll tell you the truth, I haven't heard anything that really caught my attention yet. Um, it's tough. They sound like everybody else that I yeah. grew up grew up with, man. You know, and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the fact that it's it's harder for bands to become themselves with such you know history behind them. Yeah. You know, all those riffs were you know, I so know. many riffs were, and drum beats and you know and w even the people that did it at that time, like me and people even older than me that did it before me, they were had to copy somebody and they had to right. do it. You know, they had you have to learn from somebody. Anybody that doesn't have any influence is full of shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And what are so, your listening habits like? You know, if you're gonna sit down, like let's say, and you're gonna uh you know sit and listen to music, uh uh as a and and, and I've said on here I'm trying to be better about doing this and certainly doing the podcast helps. Yeah, where, where, where it's great to have guests on who have a, who have longevity, but it's also nice you, you, you know, kind of giving a platform to some of the younger okay. artists. But your okay. own listening habits though, do you tend to like okay, I'm gonna listen to some music? Do you try to go on the platforms and find new music or do you kind of fall back on your old standards if, if you know? I, I'm guess, guilty of it. Yeah, well, I have such an array of styles and genres of music that I love. I'll yeah. never, I can never get bored. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just the stuff that I like is yeah. enough to keep me busy. That's why, you know, I'm guilty of not trying to look out for great bands out there because I know there's tons of them, man. Yeah. You know, people are always playing great music. You just yeah. got to find it now because now, not like the old days, it was the sea is huge and you got to sift through all the stuff, man, you know? And yeah. then you got to see what's being proposed to you, marketed to you, and like, you know, um, kind of forced upon you commercially and, and, you know, corporately. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Some bands absolutely. Just put out there in front of you and like, they may not be like anything special at all, but just because they got all that backing. Sometimes it's the bands that you might hear from, you know, some guy from Europe from some weird town that sends you a demo or that you'd be like, oh my God, what? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And you make but, a good point, and you make a good point too, because a lot of people are getting famous not so much on talent, but on their social media profile. You yeah, know? man. Well, because we're into the different age now, so it's yeah, like, you know, sometimes the better businessman you are, you know, it doesn't even matter how talented you are. It's just you're a talented businessman, and and you, and you can sell something. You know. Yeah. And speaking of business, uh, uh, you, you know, in your opinion, because I've talked to bands. Uh, you know, uh, guys in bands on here, you know, who have had long careers, but, but, you, you know, because the business has changed so much, a lot of them are, are, have become, uh, DIY bands. Do you think that's good or, or is there still a benefit to being on a label and how much benefit is there? Mm, I don't know. It's been a while for me to tell you. The truth, so. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to get royalties. God damn it. No. Um, it's probably better these days to do, do it yourself, man. Although yeah. there's some great metal labels out there that I'm sure if you can, if you have the knowledge to negotiate a decent contract, it's that's probably a great thing too because you know your music is getting out there instantly, you know. Yeah, yeah. And marketed, and you don't have to worry about you know that's a lot of work to do yourself, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As a fan, what do you think about the uh, uh, the what's your take on the? Uh, I haven't asked anybody this, I don't think in in a while, but it, it just it, it just was on my brain because. Uh, they're going to be having a tour stop here in upstate New York. What do you think about the big Pantera reunion? Are you for it? Do you love it? Do you not, not like it? I mean, I mean, I'm, I was never a gigantic, incredible Pantera fan. Yeah. But um, great guys, too, man. I, I You know, um, I met them a couple of times. But um, I think it's a great thing. Why not celebrate the band? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People are getting too polarized with this whole thing. People yeah, are just trying to, like... I just see it as as they're trying to you know they're showing love they're getting together to doing you know playing the songs they love to play. Fortunately, you know some key members are not there, but you got some great people in there, and they and they're professional and killer musicians, man. So what's the problem, you know? Yeah. You know you can't you know the purists are going crazy. 
probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think the polarizing topic really is like, uh, you know, and the, you know, this is just the things that I've seen commented on. Uh, of course, the cash grab thing. It, it, yeah, everything's yeah, a course. cash grab. Well, God forbid, you know, God forbid these guys go out and, and earn a living. You know, I right. mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it's crazy because, um, in in a way, it's it, it's giving a, a new generation a chance to check out the music too live. Yeah, so, well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I mean, come on. no, I mean, a whole generation of people that never got to hear them are going to get to right. hear those songs. But this is gatekeeper shit, right? Yeah, it is. It is kind of gatekeeper shit. Yeah, and plus the players that they got. I mean, Zach and Charlie. I mean, come, come on, on, man. The yeah, killer, man. come on, Charlie kicks ass. Man. I know. Always, ha always has, man. You know. And it's so good to it's so good to see that uh, uh, you know a guy like Charlie get to gig you know because yeah. you know obviously so much has been made of the Bay Area thrashing and it is legendary but we got some good shit over here on our coast Thank you, too. Sir. That's correct. That's you know? correct. People don't sleep on the East Coast, man. Don't sleep right. on the East Coast. And let's certainly it's not great. forget the great. Let's certainly not forget the great Overkill consistently absolutely. crushing it. You know, no doubt, man. It's still yeah. doing it, man. Still yeah. killing. It. Yep, absolutely, man. And and uh, you know. Uh, as you get older in this business, and uh, and and you know, I, I certainly don't say this like, uh, uh, okay, Joe, it's time to hang up the drumsticks or anything like that. But you are in great shape, still enjoying what you're doing. But but as a musician, do you ever think in terms of like putting a stop date on it, or it, or is it just like till the wheels fall off? Never, bro. Never. Yeah. yeah. I'll hop. To, I'll be dead <laughs> if I don't play, man. That'll kill me quicker than me dying. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not I, something. I, I, so it's I not something you can ever it. see stopping. You wouldn't stop. No, I just never, never. I just my my dad's eighty now. He's still playing, man. So no yeah. shit. Yeah, man. You know, it's he's in great shape too. He's he's thank God bless, man. The guy's still up and running, man. Pretty damn good. And uh, I'm just you know I never think about any of those. I'm just looking forward to the next time I can sit behind the drums, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and 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 how often? Uh, of course, now you know we finally got some good weather out there. Uh, 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 outdoor stuff. You know, do you ever get a chance to go out and go go out and throw the apple around? Hell yeah, man! Yeah. Well, I also yeah, I have you know you know I got a son now, so we're gonna be doing that. He's he's five, you know. It's, it's yeah, gonna be cool. I'll I'll get some more youth in me, man. Playing with yeah. him, and you know, I I deal with um, a lot of kids on in a uh, job I do. So I'm I'm always you know active you know working with uh, kids throwing balls around and kicking stuff and yeah breaking shit and Jesus <laughs> Christ uh you know if a five year old you, you know I mean if you have a five year old you certainly can't you certainly can't let the energy level drop at all oh man you know I have enough energy for him me and my wife man. yeah yeah it's good. <laughs> that's probably a good thing though I mean I you know I. I I'm finding that you know I have three kids and they're all grown, but now I'm in the grand I'm in the grandkid territory. So I'm a grandfather. I'm a, I'm a granddad, a grandfather, dad. <laughs> uh, I you know I had a, I had my son really late, but it's it's an incredible experience. It's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, uh, is your uh, you know is your son? Well, you know I I I have grandchildren uh, in that same age bracket. What do they think about uh, uh, the music that you play? Oh, he loves it. He knows, you know, he's around, you know, singing whatever I'm practicing with. He's, you know, he memorizes it. He's, yeah. he's got a little, you know, he sits behind my little electronic kit sometimes. He shows some interest. You know, I'm not going to force him into it, but yeah, he likes everything I play, man. Loves Accept. Yeah. He loves uh, Restless and Wild, the new remix. It goes, you know, has this crazy, like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm going nuts. It's great. And 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 obviously, you know, you've maintained, uh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of this is attributed to your, you know, your 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 your, your gregarious, uh, you know, attitude and your love for for life. I'm sure you've stayed friends with a lot of the guys uh, you've played with. Uh, have you ever, you know, have, has there been any talk with some of the past musicians of 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 ever, uh, you know, uh, rekindling that musical relationship? Like you think of somebody like Speedy, you know, what I mean, you think of any of these guys in the past and 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 ever kick around the idea of. Hey, we should get together and do something. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be great. I, I, you know, I if there wasn't any really bad blood between anybody from the past, which I can only think of like maybe one or two people. Yeah. But besides that, yeah, I, I would always be open to play music with anybody that I've ever, you know, done it before. Because, you know, once you do something, you're in a band with somebody. You know, you're that's a special bond that never really it can yeah. never really go away, man. You know. Yeah, I can't lie. I'm a little bummed, you know, and I told Speezy so, uh, you know. I, I'm a little bummed to have seen his tenure uh, with Creator, and he had a great run though—twenty-five oh years. Jesus, unbelievable! Unbelievable! Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's unfortunate, man. It's very unfortunate. That's a long time, man. man. Yes. Yeah. But he's in bonded right now. Amazing right? band. And yeah. you know, Species is always gonna do good. But the crazy part is that when we, we were looking for a bass player, when I first joined Creator, we were in the um, practice rooms. Species wasn't in the room next door playing bass. And we were trying people out left and right. I didn't know Species. I didn't know anybody really, man. Except, mm -hmm. Frank, except for Frank. So I heard Species playing next door. I said, bro, let's just fucking give this guy a shot. Yeah. He's there. He's been there every fucking day for hours. You always hear the guy. Lo and behold, bro, he fucking got the job. And what was he doing next door? Was he playing with another band? No, he was by himself playing ba ba playing bass by himself. I don't know if he was with it. I don't know what he. I don't know if he had a band in there. But anytime I heard him, he was just by himself in that, in that room. That's so. That's so sad. It, it's like he's like a bass orphan over there. Just I like know, it was home. crazy. But you know the beautiful part of that is, is that. Um, all these years later, Speezy gets in touch with me. He says, bro, contact Baron. Get in that band, Carnivore D, man. They, yeah. What are you, fucking crazy? Join yeah. that band. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's so a he huge. Actually, he helped me out, man. He, and, you know, and, he returned the favor. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, when you're out on your travels, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, of course, as I said, you've been doing this a long time yourself. But are there people out there, you, you know, out on the road and in your travels that, that, that you come across where, like, you've ever felt like a little bit fanboy, like a little starstruck? Oh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I would say. Uh, we played, um, let me see, we, we, Carnivore D, we played last June with, oh, my God, we played with Voidbot and Exodus, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. We were on the same bill was with them. Uh, it was incredible, man. Yeah. And I saw, you know, I saw Tom. I met those guys again. I didn't see them. I met them when I was in, just joined Whiplash because Whiplash and Exodus knew each other from the when Whiplash went out to the Bay Area. Right. Luffy's with Death Angel. That's like some really famous stuff over there. Yeah. But I met Gary Holt then. I saw them play um, at the Capitol Theater in Passaic. That uh, was really cool. Uh, I was hanging out backstage with them. And I was like, I was a fucking fan, bro. And I just joined one of my favorite bands, Whiplash. I was in one of my favorite bands. Yeah. And I was fucking hanging out with Exodus. And I was like, this is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. I feel like Exodus is that band. Like, you know, if someone doesn't know Thrash it, and they want like a template or like, or, yeah, or, man. Or, or, you know, Exodus is that band that I point to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, X is so fucking killer, man. It's just they Always epitomize. Love. It's just they epitomize thrash. And I just saw them on the Bay Area Strikes Back tour last year. Them, Death Angel, and Testament. And those bands oh, are yeah. just fucking timeless, man. I mean, they're fucking. Yeah. You know, they're out playing. They're, you know, they're playing guys half their age under the table. I yeah, mean, they well, really they, are. That's what. Well, I mean, like they're part of the invention of the genre, man. So you know, they're part. They're staples of of what thrash is, man. You know? Yeah. So, I'm How also very, I'm also very excited because I just recently read an article that Gary Holt is going to be writing his memoir. Oh wow, that's that's going to be a good book. Yeah, oh, no doubt, man. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of that, I saw um when I was touring with Creator in '95, we played in Berkeley, and um um Tom came down to check me out with uh, Mark Hernandez. You know, who Mark Hernandez, uh drummer. He was he was in Forbidden. He was in a bunch of bands. Oh yeah, great guy, killer drummer too. They came to see me, man, and like, oh shit, Tom is, I, I, you know, I'm setting it up and stuff, and I'm playing. I turn around, and fucking Tom is right in back of me, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. watching me play, like, right in back of me. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. You know, that's. You know, that no was, pressure. No pressure. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> it's only Tom but, hunting. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was great, man. And, and then I saw him later on, like, last year, and I said, bro, remember me, man? He was Joe, and I gave him a big hug, and I said, man, I'm so fucking happy that you beat that cancer, bro. I know. Yeah, it was nice, man. I, I yeah. talked to Steve Steve Zoza for a little while. You know, those guys are like some of my heroes in Thrash for sure. And great news in the metal world, too. You know, you brought up Forbidden, man. You know, they're back now as a fully yes. realized band. Back That's in full right. swing. That's yeah. right, man. I wish them the, all the best, too, man. Oh, you know, man. It's cool that these you know bands are trying to... Some of the old guys are coming back out there and, you know, doing what they did, man, before. Always a polarizing topic, man. But like, yes. what did you think? Uh, 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 you, you, uh, your views on, and we talked about Lars a little earlier. Your views on the new Metallica album? Um, I only heard a couple of tracks. I don't. I wasn't really bothered by it as yeah. much as all the fucking you know hoopla about it. But it sounded like you know Metallica to me, man. It was yeah. closer to what I, I thought it sounded better than most stuff I heard that they've done recently. So me too. I'm, act I'm actually interested. I'm yeah. actually interested in. Um, you know, I guess the last record, it was okay for me. You know, some of it, I don't even own it, but some of the stuff I just heard on this one may be for me. Just those two tracks. I, heard, I think I heard two tracks. 
Yeah. I was like, all right. They they sound like they're getting back to, you know, the good old, you know, Metallica sound, man, you know. Is it Most tough as an like, artist? Is it tough as an artist, though? You know, because I feel like sometimes uh, uh, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, you, you you take a beating if you're putting out the same album and staying consistent. You then people say that way. you know. Then yeah. people say that you're sounding old. But then when you tweak your sound, you've gotten right. too far away from what you right. did good. You can't please everybody all the time, bro. Right. You know, it's just know. the way it's it is, tough. man. It's, you guys are so you under can't. a microscope all the time. You can't do it, man. And but and especially these days, everybody's so fucking opinionated. Everybody's like, "Oh my god, this! Oh my god, that!" And everybody's complaining about everything, man. You know? Yeah. Like, come on, stop c crying already, man. It is yeah. what it is. You know what it is, and that's it, man. You know? <laughs> so, know. what do you have coming up uh, 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 immediately on the horizon here? Oh my god, um, Monday we leave for Europe. Um, we'll go into Carnival Days, going to uh, uh, Germany for five straight days. Yeah. Five dates, which is going to be fucking great. I can't wait. The first stop is back to my old uh, stomping grounds with Creator uh, in Essen. Uh, we're playing yeah. Tour Rock in Essen the 21st of June, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be great, man. We're going to do five shows, and uh, I can't wait. I think the last show, somebody said that they might be filming it with like six, eight cameras or something. So, And that will be our last show, so that should be a pretty damn good uh Yeah. It'd be a good one but i'm yeah. just excited to go out there and play this music because you know i'm seeing old friends i'm seeing in germany it's, it's i love germany man too yeah yeah it's my second home you know i lived there i worked there yeah friends there you know i saw frank last time it was incredible man too i'm very uh you know still really good friends with frank uh and uh, i'll see him i like to see sodom play here in the states man yeah you know, yeah you know, it's hard for them to come here for some reason, but I'm I'm looking for it. I think when they do, it's gonna be pretty big. Yeah, I want to go down and see Creator too, but they're down in New York City, and I'm upstate. Yeah. And after a couple of back surgeries, and at the age that I'm at now, it's so hard to go five six hours to see a fucking show in a car. Yeah, I hear you. you. Know? I hear you. It's rough, but that's a long ride. Yeah, yeah, it is a long ride. But uh, you know, they're always a bucket list band because I've never gotten a chance to see them live. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. they sound they sounded great, man. You know, yeah. I'm I'm born. You know, I like the older stuff, of course. But you know they've changed into a different kind of band. Yeah. You know, they have they have those Norwegian harmonies going on. They got some of those you know very catchy chorus, new metal type choruses, man. Yeah. But you know, creator's creator, man. Creator's creator, creator man. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you know. I feel like if I don't let you go, I could sit here and talk to you all day because it's just so easy to sit here and chat with you, man. One of my favorite guests, easily, and I've done 120 oh, some God, odd episodes, right? man. But this has been a lot of fun getting to talk oh, to you. Man. Anytime, bro. And thank you for inviting me over here, man. You know. I'm yeah. I mean, and you know, please stay in touch, and, and hopefully we can do it again sometime. Oh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, I wish yeah. you nothing but the best, man. It's you know, safe travels, man, out there, Thank man. Thank you so much, man. I'm so yeah. looking forward to it, man. You know, just keep, you know, keep that yeah. torch lit, man. You know, yeah. keep that torch lit. You can just keep playing the music that we love. Well, thank you, Joe Cangelosi or Tony Scaglione, whoever you really are. <laughs> know, right? Who is the real? <laughs> they got the mask. In oh, place. my God. It's Tony Scaglione. <laughs> I appreciate right, you, bro. I appreciate you so thank much. You, thank you, man. Yeah. Great to talk to you, man. Yeah, Have you too, one, brother. Man. All, right, All right. Later, man. Take care. Take care. Take care, bro. Later. There he goes, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that, man. That was a fucking fun one right there, man. If every guest came on with that kind of enthusiasm and exuberance, that's Joe Cangelosi right there. Uh, that is a guy who has pounded the skins, which I myself have done. Different type of skins. But uh, um, uh, you don't have to be a drummer to pound the skins. Believe me on that. Uh, uh, Ex-girlfriends out there, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, Joe Cangelosi, man, one of the fucking great ones out there, man. Great guy, great personality. Uh, can see why he stayed friends with so many of his ex-bandmates, man. I mean, just such a likable guy, man. Uh Civil War, Brooklyn Militia, Death Corps, uh, stint with Creator, Whiplash, uh, now doing, uh, uh, now behind the kit for Carnivore AD, uh, uh, the, uh, the the most recent uh, incarnation of the legendary, legendary Carnivore uh, uh, that people remember, Pete Steele, the late great. Um, and so you hear, you know, they're hitting the road. Uh, if they're coming anywhere near you, I mean, they're doing a stint in Germany right now, but keep an eye out on the website or on the internet. Uh, uh, they are back going out and, uh, paying tribute to those, uh, to, to the old carnivore material. And, uh, so that should be a blast. Uh, if you can get to any of those fucking shows, I would recommend you do so, man. And, uh, just, uh, such a great guy to talk to, man. And, uh, uh, want to thank for sure. My main man, Speezy Geisler out there. 
uh, for uh, kind of hooking us up. And uh, I know my main man, Andrew Hudson uh, of Harlot, Australian fucking thrash band Harlot, who you guys have heard me talk about on here, who I fucking love. And Andrew loves fucking creators album Cause for Conflict, which Joe Cangelosi played on. Uh, so I had to mention that at the top of the interview. Uh, hopefully, uh, if Andrew gets to watch this episode, uh, he will think that that was muy bien, uh, me bringing that up. And uh, can't say enough about the guy, man. E easily one of my favorite interviews, man. Uh, awesome guy, man. Uh, awesome energy. And uh, I enjoyed that. And I hope, he, more importantly, you guys fucking enjoyed that little chin wag with Joe Cangelosi. Keith Hernandez. Uh, back there, not super stoked right away when Joe uh, uh, copped to being a uh, Yankee fan. But, I mean, to each his own, Keith, we can't all be Mets fans. But, you know, not everybody has that kind of integrity. No, just kidding, Joe. Uh, uh, nothing wrong with being a Yankee fan. Uh, uh, the city is big enough for all of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, I love the fact that he's a baseball guy, too. Uh, that was my uh, childhood love and, uh, and or aspiration that I would do with my life. Uh, which, lo and behold, didn't come to fruition. I'm just a lowly little nurse now uh, and uh, part-time podcaster. But, you know, I digress. There's no crying in podcasting or nursing. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Thank you so much, John Cangelosi. That was a fucking blast, man. Uh, and uh, hopefully, on down the road, he will be a uh, uh, a repeat offender. We will have him on here again, man. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Until we get together and do this thing again on Pod Scum. Remember, kids, take it easy and keep it sleazy.